the NHS staff, overwhelmed and distraught by the number of patients they're treating, fear an apocalyptic disaster is just two weeks away. Those are the words of an ICU nurse who warns the NHS is on the brink of collapse, with medics preparing themselves to turn seriously ill patients away. Dave Carr uh, joins us now. You are uh, the ICU <coughs> nurse that we were referring to. Very good morning to you. You, Dave Carr, have been at the front line of this pandemic for months. And um, you describe the fact that your nursing colleagues are exhausted and in some cases even suffering the effects of PTSD. Uh, what is it like right now as infections seem to inexorably rise? So it's it's as bad as as, as you've as you've described at the moment um, in in the NHS in the ITUs uh, certainly in London. Um, our, we're over capacity already, so we're treating more patients than we normally would in in normal conditions. I mean, you've got to realise that. You know, the NHS has been trying to recover from the first pandemic. Our staff are absolutely exhausted from the first pandemic. Um, and um, I think the real problem, and I think one of the questions you should really speak to, to, to Matt Hancock about, is the, the fact that we tried to run the NHS up to the last minute, as it was absolutely clear that the pandemic numbers were rising everywhere and the admissions into hospitals were, were escalating at alarming rates. And we've been caught, we've been caught with our trousers down trying to do normal NHS work or recover our NHS work and the pandemic at the same time. So that's left us, that's left us with scenes of real chaos and, and, and confusion and real pressure inside our hospitals and our intensive care units are stretched beyond breaking. I mean, you know, we are trained as ITU nurses to look after one patient um, on a ventilator with, with life support machinery. And at the moment in ITUs, not just in, in, in my ITU, but in ITUs across London, um, these nurses are looking after not one, but two, but three patients um, on ventilators and other uh, um, organ support um, machines. It's absolutely harrowing. It's breaking. It's breaking us. And Dave, um, we, we, really saw, we saw some very uh, scary graphs that came out last night about the number of cases with this new variant, uh, which is clearly spreading at lightning speed, and also inevitably the number of hospitalizations beginning to surge to record levels as well. We know what follows that. We know that inevitably the death numbers are gonna go up. And these don't even include at the moment the period post Christmas and New, and new Year. Year. Yeah. How worried are you and your colleagues about what may be coming in the next two weeks? So it's already worse than it was in the first wave. That's, that's absolutely clear. Um, it's the worry is is extreme so um you know in the first wave we managed to slow down the nhs um convert a lot of the uh, you know support mechanisms to support the intensive care units will be, which who will be taking the the, the the bulk of the acutely sick patients and uh, we it, we're catching up with ourselves now we're not ready and we've been put in this position by the flip-flopping bad management um lack of lockdown uh, schools open you know the the whole mismanagement of the pandemic but from a personal point of view it's extremely hard for nurses that are already exhausted and we've been working in pandemic conditions since march i haven't done a single day's work where I'm not wrapped up in PPE since, since, since March. And how do you uh, feel, Dave? How do you feel when you see the footage, as we saw at the weekend, of a large group of people outside St Thomas's Hospital in London, outside the, the accident emergency there, chanting, COVID is a hoax? Well, I, I tell you what, what impact that had on the staff that, that saw that on, 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 on media. It led to staff, uh, ITU staff, breaking down in tears. Um, my own view is that this is a small minority of people that probably think the earth is flat, but it is concerning that the flouting of the rules has as, as, as grown almost as seriously as the virus has. And I think this has got to be pinned on the, the, the amount of mixed messages we have. But what I've got to say to the public, everyone out there, is our ITUs are already full. London's ITUs are already full. We are expanding our capacity, but we aren't expanding our nursing workforces as fast as we need to, and we aren't expanding our medics. Dave, we I, are... Dave, can I ask you about, just before, Suzanne, just on the capacity, a lot of people are saying, well, what, what about the Nightingale hospitals? What do you need the staff? What is your Dave? knowledge about that? Is it simply an issue of there aren't enough staff who are trained Absolutely. at ICU level? 
Absolutely. Nightingale Hospital currently is empty. If you wanted to staff the Nightingale Hospital, you would have to strip ITU nurses out of London's ITU hospitals. It's robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's absolutely appalling planning. It really is. You couldn't make this up. You really couldn't make this up. Millions spent on that hospital, a 4,000 bed capacity hospital, and it cannot be used currently because the ITU staff that we have running London's NHS at the moment, running London's ITUs, are already working short staffed. You know, we're looking, I will go upstairs very shortly to my unit. I'm on duty in, in, in a few minutes yeah. and we will have uh, nurses looking after patients that are doubled on ventilators with kidney machines, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the emissions keep coming in. We're Dave, already... Don't, we don't want to hold you back from your shift. Obviously, that's absolutely critical that you get I, there in a couple of minutes. I just want to ask you, though, before we let you go, 7.30, what is the profile of the people who are on your ICU ward right now. Um, are you seeing people of a younger, I don't mean children, we know that it doesn't, you know, it's not impacting children, thank goodness. But what is the age profile and the health profile of those who you are currently caring for? So it is younger, but that's because more people have got the virus. So I'm seeing, I've seen teenagers with, with COVID. I've seen people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, but, you know, in the last, in the last pandemic we did, we looked at, you know, we were looking at people, a lot of comorbidities in their 50s, 60s, and obviously the, 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 the people that were really vulnerable, you know, in their um, 70s and 80s, but I'm seeing younger people. Anecdotally, I'm seeing younger people inside our ITUs already. And Dave, and there, people, there are people, people in, there are people, sorry. Dave, who say, well, it's, it's always like this at winter in the NHS. We always read about uh, beds filling up. We have had flu crisis and so on. What do you say to those people? I've worked in the NHS for 38 years. I've been in critical care for 21 years. My colleagues everywhere across, across London and across Britain will be saying it's never, ever, ever been like this. This is the worst situation the NHS has been in. When you talk about being overwhelmed, we're already overwhelmed. We're already exhausted. Um, we cannot go on like this. You know, the pandemic needs to be brought under control. And I think when we're looking at a government, I mean, I have to say as a health worker, it, it, it absolutely fills me with dread that Boris Johnson is running this pandemic because he really isn't doing a, a, a job, a good job at all. If I nurse like he runs the country, I'd be sacked. Well, we have to let you go, Dave, because you do need to nurse right now. You have an important I shift, do. saving I lives. Do. Dave, I before do. we let you go, what's the, what's the one thing you'd most like like us to ask Matt Hancock. So, what, say that about Matt Hancock, what, what is the one thing you would like us most to ask him when we speak to him in an hour? I would like you to ask him how, um, how he can seriously look any health worker in the face and, 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 and tell us that he is stewarding the NHS and managing this, this, this pandemic properly. Um, you know, we, we're doing this understaffed, we're doing this underpaid. I mean, the insult that we got early, earlier on in the year with no pay rise for what we've done in COVID really, really hurt us. But I think they just need to be honest. The government needs to be honest. They're not handling the pandemic well. And the impact that's having on us in the NHS is ferocious. I mean, I'm an old boy and I've got a bit of resilience, but I'm seeing young people doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. You know, we should not be putting the amount of people in body bags that we're going to have to do because of the way this pandemic's been handled. I really think that, you know, you guys, and thanks for having us on, 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 on GMB this morning. I think you guys really need to pin the politicians about the, the, the mismanagement of the pandemic and the impacts that had on an already run down NHS. 10 years of cuts we've had. You know, it really is tough. We st we went into the pandemic with 42,000 vacancies and nurses. You know, we've lost more nurses. We haven't used the people that, that, that um, left the service and wanted to come back in the numbers we should. Our sickness levels are through the, through the ceiling. Um, we are really stressed. We are really, really tired. And yet we've got to do this all again. And I think that's on Matt Hancock and I think that's on Boris Johnson. Dave, I just want to thank you and all your staff, uh, everyone working in hospitals right now, uh, to hear the unvarnished truth from the mouth of someone who's been in the sharp end of this for many, many years is a very sobering conversation, actually. And you know, I think people need to get off social media and echo chambers and the nonsense that's being spewed about Sorry. how this is just a regular winter, it's just like the flu, it's nothing like the flu. Mm. And we need to take this a lot more seriously. Uh, Dave, good luck to you today on your shift. Please thank, thank, you, thank all your colleagues for everything that yeah. they do. Uh, you do a fantastic job. And you know we were all out every Thursday night clapping you all last time. Now we've got idiots outside hospitals chanting <laughs> COVID's a hoax. I can only imagine 
how repulsed you must all feel by that. Oh, but rest yeah. assured, most people in this country, I think I speak for most decent people in this country, we respect and value what you all do enormously. And, and we please thank you. keep I up the like, great, speak up the like great fight. One, I'd just like to say one last thing. I'd like to say thank you for the people of this country for trusting us with your loved ones. We are absolutely doing our best to keep them safe in our hospitals. Thank um, you, Dave. I know you are. Thank you very much, Dave. We appreciate okay. it. Bye-bye. I'm off Good to work. Luck. I know. Yeah.